the Church in Wales, a traditional institution with hymns, prayers and communion. Business has been good for millennia, but with ageing congregations, falling numbers and abandoned buildings, the church is facing a serious religious recession. So does the answer lie within these walls at St Michael's College, Cardiff? A new generation of priests is being prepared for a life that is as likely to include the prison cell as the pulpit, and they're taking their message to the most unlikely places. I've still got to write my sermon for tomorrow. But what will congregations make of the young upstarts? She was very confident. And what will their reactions be when they try to mash up the mass? In the 21st century, the clergy have to get out there. This is a funny working in Barmy theatre. But will the new kids at the altar get their dog collars? Talked about leaving. It's, yeah, itchy feet. Tonight, Roz makes a final decision over her future at the college. I don't think this is necessarily the wrong or the right thing, but it's a decision. The third years finally get to try on their dog collars. I can't get away with bad behaviour now in public. And a few weeks into her new job, Alex learns the tricks of the trade. It's her secret tap. But will it be a baptism of fire? This is the roller coaster ride of the Vicar Academy. It's the end of the summer term at St Michael's College, Cardiff, and it's been a busy time. From the daily routine of morning prayer to placements at hospitals and care homes, and of course the students' social calendar, at times it's hard to fit it all in. But these students are being prepared for one of the biggest challenges of their lives. The church in Wales is in the midst of great change. A third of the clergy are about to retire, a quarter of members have gone in a decade, and over 80 churches have recently closed. But there are promising signs of change. And at the college, it's the bottom line that's been the saviour. It's dramatically different now compared with where it was. It was a good college before, but it was a traditional college. It only trained men and women for full-time ministry. And our turnover, just to give you one figure, was 440,000. If I say we are now pushing 1.2 million, so we have trebled. 50 pounds of Christian aid. The students are sent to Cardiff from the different dioceses across Wales, and the bishops that run these dioceses keep a close eye on the individuals who will one day be ministering on their patch. When students are close to ordination, it's the bishop who decides to which parishes they'll be sent for an initial three years to work with an experienced vicar. Third year Stephen Bunting is eagerly awaiting a letter from his bishop that will map out the next three years of his life. In his former life as a banker, Steve was more interested in spreadsheets and statements than letters from the clergy. But now the single dad of three has more pressing thoughts on his mind. He could be sent anywhere in the diocese of Swansea and Brecon by the bishop, creating chaos in his family life if he's not close to his kids. Today is post day. <laughs> Yesterday was post day, but unfortunately not my post day. Everybody else is post day. Across Wales, anybody waiting for post got their post yesterday, but not me. So today is post day. Postman will be due soon, hopefully with a letter from the bishop. Here he comes. Can't see my letter. Can't see my letter. Hopefully, hopefully you've got a letter for me. Hello. Something for everybody. Thank there you. There you go. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Bye. There it is. That is here. That is here. Right, I'm going to go to my room. See you later, Jones. Okay. Let's open the letter. Oh, that's great. Yes. The big relief for Steve is that he's being sent to a parish in Swansea and will be close to his three children. That's really good news, really, really positive news. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. And it's so real now as well. Dear me, I might have to do this. Alex Grace is also on tenterhooks to find out where she and her two daughters are going to be moving soon. The single mother has made many sacrifices to be at the college 
and she has no idea where in the Diocese of St. David's she's going to have to set up home, an area that covers almost all of West Wales. I'm just so, I can't believe it, because in there is the next three years of our lives, and it just, I just can't believe it. So, shall I open it? Oh, gosh. We're going to 10B. <laughs> oh, my girls are going to be so pleased. <laughs> but I didn't want to sort of hope. I'm sorry, I was. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's really, really good. We love Tanby, it's just such a great place. We go there sometimes for our holidays. And of course, Caldy Island is just across the water. And when we had a really tough time as a family, we went there sort of every two weeks <laughs> to this island. It was brilliant. <laughs> I'm so happy. Whilst Alex digests the good news, first year Roz is coming to terms with a different life-changing decision. The rugby fanatic, former bouncer and life model has been agonising throughout the year whether she should stay at the college. It would just be so much easier just to do something different. For me at the moment, rugby's kind of my staple, it's my reason to be here. It's, it gives me a purpose. College doesn't do that for me. Now as the year comes to an end, she's had to make a decision. It was probably wisest for me and the church if I withdrew from training at this point. More kind of putting a pause on it rather than stopping completely. I don't think this is necessarily the wrong or the right thing, but it's a decision. And I think it just got to the point where at Easter, I just, I wasn't where I was the year before or the year before that. And it, it just kind of became apparent in the conversations that I should do something about it. Ros has expressed some strongly held views throughout her time at the college that many of the students don't agree with. I've got problems with things that don't show the most love in situations, so I'm pro-choice um, when it comes to abortion and stuff like that. I'm pro-homosexuality uh, because there's no need to be negative about it. Um, so I'm also pro-gay marriage. One of her main frustrations is not with any argument she's had, but a lack of debate over these dividing issues that would have helped her move on. I don't think an open conflict is a way ahead. I think an open forum is necessary. But then I think you also need to not focus on these ethical chit-chats. Although one student is leaving the course, work at the college goes on. As the year draws to a close, there are still some placements and visits that will give the students an insight into the different aspects of their ministry. Today, they're visiting one of Cardiff's longest established funeral directors to understand some of the practicalities involved with bereavement. So when we meet a family, part of the funeral arrangements obviously have to come down to the coffin that they want us to provide. Coffins are very varied, as you can see in here, and this is only a tiny selection of what we can source. Environmental type coffins, so this is the type of coffin that would be buried in a woodland cemetery or a woodland section of a cemetery. That's made from banana leaf, and we can also get that in water hyacinth as well. I mean, the two down the end that look very grand, I would imagine they are probably for open casket use mainly? Or? They certainly are. The reason that we have them is that Cardiff is a very big multicultural area. Right. We serve all different faiths and um, typically if we helped a Chinese family, they would have a casket. Right. As well as gaining an understanding of the latest developments in coffins, the students also get an insight into the world of embalming. This is a fully working embalming theatre. The staff that work in here are all formally externally qualified, otherwise they couldn't work in here. We have a, a rigorous checking system when they arrive first. 
But what has Alex Grace, who will soon be conducting funerals, got out of the visit? There are lots of myths about things and it's good to get, a, to get your own view of how things are done and what happens. It enables us to answer questions about what goes on. Because obviously when somebody dies, there's such a lot of grief and pain and, and anxiety about you know, what's going to happen. And I just think the more we can do to, to explain to people what's going to happen and, and to help at that point, the better. As well as one day visits like this, the students have also been sent on several placements throughout the year. First year, Rachel Simpson, the youngest student at the college, has been sent back to school. Let me tell you a story, said Jesus to the crowd one day. A this morning, Rachel is helping out with the assembly at St Monica's, a primary school run by the church in Wales. Youth is not the only standout fact about Rachel. Vickering also runs in the family, as both her parents wear dog collars. But on a visit to the college, her mother confesses that Rachel was never encouraged to sign up to the course. I'm really glad she's doing it. Well, I encourage her, but I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have suggested it because I think it's um, it's the sort of thing you've got to be positive you want to do. I mean, up until the last few years, they've actually wanted people to have a bit more experience before they go to college because there are lots of people now who take early retirement and then train. The age profile has shot up, so there's loads and loads of older people in ministry and hardly any younger ones. So um, Oh, when I went through selection, they, they wouldn't have let anybody in at Rachel's age. But fortunately, they've seen the error of their ways, so there will be a few more young people around, which is good. At St Monica's, Rachel's getting an insight into how parental choices can affect the way that faith is presented. The benefit of this school is that because it's a church and Wales school, the parents send their children here knowing that they're going to have a Christian input. Um, so. Uh, the parents would rather they had some sort of faith input than nothing at all, so you're, you're quite free to do a Christian message. Whereas I think in a non-church school, um, you have to be a bit more sensitive to other religions because the parents aren't signing up for a Christian ethos to be taught to their children, whereas here they are by sending them to the school. As well as helping out at assembly, Rachel is expected to roll up her sleeves in the classroom and at the school sports day in order to get an understanding of the modern world of education. I'd much rather be out here with a college of small children than stuck in theological college with a book. It's much more interesting. For one so young, a lifelong commitment to the church is quite a big step, but for Rachel, it was always going to be a leap of faith. I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You can never tell. I didn't exactly get an email from God saying, go be a vicar. Back at the college, the academic year draws to a close with the end of year service. It's a chance to say goodbye to the third years before they're formally ordained and to present them each with a stole, symbolising the burden of ministry and to mark a turning point in their lives. Steve, may God who has been faithful in equipping you for your ministry give you the grace to serve his people and may his blessing be with you always. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. At the end of the service, the students are greeted by their fellow students and lecturers for the very last time. And for some, it's an emotional and overwhelming experience. And as with all other major events at the college, it's a chance to share a meal before saying goodbye. Yeah, just have a laugh now, have our dinner, and just hang out before we say goodbye. People start leaving their cars later. Before they depart, there's one last presentation for another student who will be leaving St Michael's and not returning. And while they all share their final meal together, 
The third year's mines turned to their upcoming ordinations and setting up homes in new areas. To be ordained, the students returned to their home cathedrals for special services that are led by the different bishops of Wales. These popular events mark the point at which they are formally received into the ministry. Alex Grace is being ordained at St David's Cathedral and the magnitude of the occasion has started to sink in. I can't believe today has arrived because it's been so long in the pipeline, but um, really excited, quite apprehensive. We're all doing parts within the service, so obviously thinking about getting those right, not messing up majorly. At Brecon Cathedral, the ordination is a family affair for Steve, but before the service can start, there's a legal ceremony where he and his fellow students promise to accept the authority of the bishop. It's a point of no return. Although the wording and the setting might seem um, slightly bizarre, uh, it's important that you mean what you are swearing and that you understand the consequences of what you are swearing. So if that hasn't frightened you, um, we'll crack on. Hi, Stephen Leo Bunting, Bachelor of Theology. We declare that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Swansea and Brecon and to his successors in all things lawful and unlawful. Because it's a legal um, institution and it's a, in a lawful institution, you've got to swear obedience at the start in the presence of the Chancellor and the Registrar. So in the, in the, at the start we sweared um, to be basically to be a good deacon and then at the end you swear um, to be a good deacon in that specific church, so for me an oyster man. Both cathedrals are packed out for what is one of the happiest occasions in the church calendar. And the highlight of the service is a point when each bishop places his hands upon the trainees that are entering the ministry, reflecting Jesus' commissioning of his disciples and creating a chain of contact throughout the church's history. Send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Stephen for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Alex for the office and work of a deacon in your church. May they be faithful in service, ready to teach and constant in prayer. May they abound in faith, be rooted in love, and seek only your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And I'm sure that uh, you would want to welcome all these newly ordained people into the service of Christ. Jesus. During the post-ordination celebrations, Steve's struggling to get used to the new uniform. I wear a collar now, which is really strange this morning, putting it on. Um, I bought it a few weeks ago and tried it on once, but actually wearing it today is quite strange, because it's the universal symbol that somebody's a vicar, so I can't get away with bad behaviour now in public. It's almost like a graduation present, really. But it is, you know, you've got, it, it, there's a serious side to wearing it, you know, people know who you are now and you've got that responsibility, you've got a reputation of yourself and the church to withhold, you know, but hopefully it'll be a good mission, mission opportunity as well, people will see you in it and speak to you. In St David's, it's another emotional landmark on Alex's journey, yet she doesn't quite feel the finished article. I'll never feel ready, <laughs> but uh, yes, I'm keen to start. But there's a diff I don't think I'll ever be ready for this. I just have to trust God and get on with it. Part of trusting in God is moving to a community and setting up home. And for Alex, that means Tenby. Like all other newly ordained students, she'll be expected to start work immediately. Alex will be taking part in services in five different churches of the area. Under the guidance of an experienced vicar, and doing everything from marriages to funerals and Sunday sermons. With a term of at least three years to serve, the post also comes with a house. And Alex has enlisted the help of a removals company to get her and her two daughters set up. Moving to Tenby is proving to be something of a homecoming. We've loved living in Cardiff and I was really sad to leave, but as we were coming down the um, the motorway and then the dual carriageway. I had this real sense of homecoming. I used to work um, near St Clair's as well, and when we passed there, I just felt really at home. So that was 
That was really unexpected, but lovely. Even with the professionals at hand, everything doesn't quite go to plan. It's homemade, isn't it? Is yes, it set? is homemade. My friend's son made it for us. So I'm a bit worried that it's, she's glued. Oh, he's glued it as well. We might get it, yeah, we'll get the glue. It's going in the kitchen and it won't go through the door. And one of my friend's sons has made it. And he's done a sort of belts and braces job on it and he's glued it and screwed it so it won't come apart. It'll be fine. But with an experienced team involved, there's always a new plan at hand. Yeah. They're totally brilliant. When we moved into the last house, they got our sofa in through the patio doors on the first floor balcony <laughs> because they just couldn't find any other way. But they're brilliant. They really are. I'm so pleased. Stephen Bunting is moving into a new home in the parish of Oystermouth. He'll be working in the Mumbles area of Swansea in two different churches as part of a team of clergy. And unlike Alex, he's taken a more leisurely approach to moving house, with child labour playing a prominent role. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you pay for professional, rem professional removals. Put one hand in the handle and put one hand underneath. Can you carry that? Please don't drop my books. <laughs> There's a surprise. Right, leave them, leave them. I'm trying to involve them so it looks like, you know, they're moving as well. You know, it's all part of a family thing, it's not just Dad's house. Whilst the clergy are usually given a house that is owned by the parish in which they can set up home, Steve's family situation of sharing custody of his three children has created a slightly different situation. So normally when you go into a parish you get the curate's house, but in this parish um, the curate's house was, was smaller than what I would have needed with the three children. So they managed to rent a house for me. It was a real challenge in all fairness for the parish to find accommodation that wasn't um, extremely expensive because Mumbles is a really popular place. You know, the house prices are really high and the rentals are really high. Um, but we were lucky with this house because the owner of the house is somebody who worships in the parish. The first major test for newly ordained vicars are the big services that people usually associate with the church, such as weddings and baptisms. These offer the potential to ruin someone's big day or offend an entire family unused to church traditions. This is our secret tap. Today, Alex has a series of babies to baptise in St Mary's Church at the centre of Tenby, and it's a service that she's relishing. I've got two baptisms on this afternoon, so that's really, really exciting. I've spoken to one lot of parents who are lovely and I'm looking forward to meeting them. I haven't actually seen any of them before, um, so it'll be nice to meet them and see the children. Stand back. For even the most experienced of vicars, there's always a tense moment when water meets baby's head and whether they have to battle on with a screaming child in their hands. Lola Scarlet, tuck your arm in. No. I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet girl. Good girl. Good girl. Lola Scarlet, the Christian Church welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and sign you with the sign of the cross, that you may never be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ, but valiantly fight against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue his faithful servant to the end of your life. The words of the service have a personal impact on Alex, and she has to try and keep her emotions in check. Her hope is that she can convey a sense of the service's importance. When it says in its name, I claim you for our saviour, Jesus Christ, that bit, yeah, that gets me every time. It's 
a huge thing that you know that we're doing here I hope I never lose that sense as well of just how huge this is really in the mumbles Steve is preparing for another big event he's got a key role in a wedding ceremony and it's a full house on a sunny day Guests are arriving. I do love weddings. I'm quite relaxed today. We had a good rehearsal with them on Wednesday and they were a really down-to-earth couple who um, I think really relaxed and that helps. So yeah, it'll be fine. From Hound Dark. Uh, very warm welcome and good afternoon to you uh, today as together uh, we come to witness the marriage of Craig and Anna. Such a privilege to have such a front seat view as two people come together. I'm more excited about getting to know the couple before they get married, helping them you know, go through preparation and then enjoying the day with them rather than just you know, only meeting them a couple of days before. Gracious God, we pray for Craig and Anna and give thanks that you have brought them together in marriage. Lord, in your mercy. In the midst of the celebrations, does the stream of baptisms and weddings for many who don't come to Sunday services bring out any cynicism in the newly ordained? I think there is that kind of, you know, oh, they just, you, you know, use the church or whatever. For, but that's what we're here, here for. We're here to to mark these stages in people's life, you know, and, and I think it's our duty to welcome them so much that they want to come back, they see something here that is attractive, you know, and they want to have more of that. But you've just got to make sure that you do the, make the most of the occasion and, and try and make them feel so welcome that they'd want to come back. A few weeks into their new roles, Alex and Steve are becoming used to life on the front line. Now that they've stepped out of the college and are facing real-world challenges head-on, what do they make of a church that's starting to change? Numbers are, are, are really low. People aren't hearing the message, and whether we're not preaching it right or whatever it is, we need we need to adapt. The church has to change. Whether whether you know people can cling on to it as much as they want, the church has got to change. It's got to be streamlined and fit for mission. But we need change, it's got to happen. We're doing something, not that we're doing something wrong at the moment, but that we need to do something right to spread the gospel and the church has got to change. So then this needs to be a, a sensitive way of making the changes, but without throwing the baby out with the bathwater, I think. And in 20 years time, will the church still be there for them? I hope I am. Um the leader of a big, thriving church that is reaching out and is changing people's lives. You know, when I started the process, the church looked like one thing, and I think it is going to change, but we need the change, it's necessary, and I think the Bible, it's very biblical, you know, that there's a time of pruning and cutting back, and there's a time for flourishing. September 2012, the beginning of a new term at St Michael's College, Cardiff, and a new intake of students are being prepared to face up to the challenges of a changing institution. But for the church in Wales, the message remains the same. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. 